please like and subscribe. Let's grow NAI basketball. Thank you. Cascade Hoops Talk, bringing the world NAI basketball one podcast at a time. Hey, Cascade Hoops Talk, Billy D. Well, it's Friday, December 15th, getting close to Christmas, but there's still a lot of basketball to be played this weekend. Hey, do yourself a favor. Get your family all together. Take them out to watch an NAI basketball game. The kids will love it. I know I tease about it being a great deal, but a lot of times it's a doubleheader. Uh, You can get the whole family in. I mean, you're going to spend less than 50 bucks. Uh, and it's just a great time for the entire family and really exciting. And it's great basketball. You go to an NBA game, you're going to pay 50 bucks for one seat to sit in the nosebleeds. You make the choice. Hey, tonight we're going to talk about the games last night, a couple upsets we're going to review, and then we're going to have Delton Deal. He's the head men's basketball coach of the Sagu Lions. So let's get right to it. Number two, Langston. They had all they could handle from Central Christian College. A Central Christian is, is good this year. Uh, don't take anything away from them, but they let a good share of this game. They were up by four at Marcus Haynes Court. Uh, fans in Langston were uh, uh, getting a little bit nervous. Uh, the young lady who calls the game on the video, when it was over, she said, boy, that was a, that was a heart stopper. That was a, a, a real, she mentioned they really sweated it out, but they got the win. 75-67, uh, you know, Lang- Langston executed very well down the stretch. Central Christian missed some opportunities. So the Langston Lions now, they go to 10-0. and Ronald Mitchell tonight, 16 points, 5 assists. Cortez Mosley, 14 points, 11 rebounds for the big double-double. So the 10-0, and number two Langston Lions, they're going to play LSU Shreveport on December 19th. That's next Tuesday. Also tonight, speaking of Shreveport, uh, Shreveport went to 8-0. They beat Our Lady of the Lake 108-99. Uh, I would describe Our Lady of the Lake tonight as pesky. Uh, it seemed uh, several times that Shreveport was going to up and just kind of run away with it, but they just, they wouldn't go away. Uh, they stayed close, but uh, too much Shreveport uh, at the end of the game, too much Shreveport, uh, you know, you know what I'm saying? They just kind of overpowered them toward the end and they ended up winning one Oh eight 99 Calvin Carpenter, 16 points, Damon Davis, who has played really well for the pilots, 17 points, three rebounds, uh, LSU Shreveport, they're eight. No, and they'll play Saturday at Huston Tillotson. Number 16, Mobile, they get upset tonight. They go to Mississippi. They play Blue Mountain Christian, and they got they got beat uh, 59-54. They go to 9-3 tonight for Blue Mountain. Manny Patrick, 15 points, 6 rebounds. Also for Blue Mountain, Jalen Boyd, Boyd Savage, 11 points, 3 rebounds. Uh, Mobile's going to have to uh, right the ship very quickly because on Saturday they face Stillman. So they're six, nine and three, and they play Stillman on Saturday. And then uh, Xavier, they were at home, and they fell to Texas College, 66-56. They go to six and two. Uh, sorry, I couldn't get the uh, pictures. It was hard to get stats. Uh, I, boy, neither one of those schools really seemed in a big anxious hurry to get stats up. Uh, but the leading scorers for Texas College, uh, Karik Debon, and I'm sure I'm just messing your name up, young man. I'm so sorry. Nagy Jones, uh, 13 points, five assists. So Xavier now, they're, see that? They're six and two now, and they're going to play Jarvis Christian on Saturday. A couple other games I wanted to bring up. Uh, Mount Vernon Nazarene out of the crossroads. They went up to Illinois and took on Judson. And Mount Vernon Nazarene has played really well this season. And uh, they, they had to come from behind 
uh, you know, you're playing on the road and, uh, you know, the crossroads Chicagoland game, you can just imagine. Uh, but the Cougars survive. Cade Rudziger, 27 points, six rebounds. Trent Coning, 16 points, three rebounds for Mount Vernon. So I believe they're nine and one now. Also last night, if I can get this thing back, um, two teams that are uh, two teams that are traditionally very strong. Evangel at, at Mid America tonight. Both these teams are trying to get back in the thick of the action. Evangel they got the win over uh, Mid -Amer Mid American Christian, 80, 82 to seventy five. Uh, jo Josh, I misspelled his name. Josh Pritchard, 17 points, five rebounds. Josh Mason, 15 points, seven rebounds. So that was a big win for Evangel tonight. Also, there's one more here. Nope, it's in the next slide. Uh, in uh, IU Kokomo tonight, you know, they were, they started out, I believe they started out eight and zero, and they lost two straight. They were slipping a little bit, and I said earlier that earlier in the day I put out a tweet. I said they have to, they need a statement win. Well, they got a statement win. IU Kokomo beat Midway, 86-59. Ty Willis 22 points, Noah Harris 13 points, 12 rebounds. Max Newman 12 points, 12 rebounds. I think, just my opinion, I think uh, the addition of Mac Newman has been really big for Kokomo this season. Uh, as I said, we spoke earlier with. Delton Deal, uh, Sagu Lions. He doesn't need any in, any uh, introduction. You guys know who he is. Let's listen to Delton Deal, Delton Deal, Sagu Lions. Cascade Hoops Talk, Billy D. Hey, I got Delton Deal here. He's the head men's basketball coach at Southwestern Assemblies of God. You probably know him as Sagu. Welcome, coach. How you doing? Yeah, very good. Thanks for being on the show. I appreciate you having me on. So, Coach Deal, uh, you... First thing I want to ask you about is the bowlings. You got a whole carload of bowlings that play for you. Two, uh, two of them are from, I don't have it in front of me, Van Alstein and another one from uh, another. Are they all related? Yeah, so funny story is, uh, yeah, so we have Noah and J.J. Bowling, their brothers. Um, the funny thing is their older brother, Isaiah, also played for us. Uh, he just graduated two years ago, so he was on the team before. Um, Noah was the first one to make it on, to come on our team a few years ago. I've known their family for a while. Um, one of my old players was family friends with them and okay. um, kind of put me on them. So, yes, those two are brothers. And then the other one is their cousin. So, yeah, family affair over here at Sagu. So we do, you know, and it's it's funny. We have we actually have two sets of brothers that start on our team because our point guard and shooting guard are also brothers. They're the Halls, and they are also brothers. So funny, funny thing about us, we have two bowlings and two Halls starting in our starting lineup right now. And, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of funny, but it's, you know, led to some good team uh, connectivity and synergy and stuff and they're great kids so yeah um, it's been awesome so hey coach deal you got one up on every everybody says we <clears throat> we're a family right well you are a family <laughs> Literally, yeah we break it out with family and we mean it <laughs> so you you mentioned uh halls uh you know you got a couple of cjs cj hall cj kelly played at mclennan yeah. community college they're tearing it up for you this season talk about those guys yeah. Yeah, they're, you know, uh, known them for a while. It's funny because C.J. Kelly actually is really close with the Hall family. Oh, so this geez. is another thing. They're kind of, <laughs> kind of been, uh, they're kind of like family friends for a long time now. So, um, yeah, so, when, you know, Al Alaric came to our school um, as actually as a walk-on. This is his fourth year. He came as a walk-on, and so did Noah, actually. They both came as walk-ons and just kind of fought and earned their way into our lineups, and they've been guys we haven't been able to take off the court the last couple of years. They're just winners and, uh, you know, uplift the teammates and make everybody better around them. So his brother CJ had been around for a while. We've known him forever. He's come up to the school a million times and um, he ended up going to junior college out of high school after a, a pretty prolific high school career around here and, um, you know, did really well at McLennan. And, you know, he got to the point at the end of his season last year where he was just um, he had some he had several options actually for him to do. But, you know, he really felt like our family atmosphere and everything he felt at home here. So he just wanted to come be with his brother. And I thought it was a, you know, easy 
easy fit for us. So he's been phenomenal. CJ Hall has been phenomenal. If you look him up, he's one of the, you know, he's, he's scoring a lot of points and had a lot of dynamic games. And, um, you know, but the best thing about him is he's a team player and plays for everybody. And even though he scores a lot of points, he's not really, you know, doing his own thing in the midst of our group. And then CJ Kelly, yeah, he's just, you know, been friends with them forever. And he got hurt last year in the middle of the season at McLennan, um, hurt his wrist. And so he missed the second half of the season and, um, you know, he had been up to our school a few times and, you know, we just kind of got him to, to go ahead and say this is what he wanted to do next. He had been to Florida International before um, McLennan and he just wanted to get a place where he could finally come and settle in and, um, you know, stop hopping around. And he felt like this was a good place for him to settle. He's been good for us. So um, he's continually getting better and, you know, just keep on getting better and better is what we're trying to do with those guys. Yeah, just to kind of finish the point you started there, C.J. Hall's averaging 24 a game, C.J. Kelly yeah. 13 a game, almost nine rebounds. Uh, mm -hmm. So here's a scary thing for everybody out there listening. Everybody Coach just talked about, except for Noah Bowling, is a junior. <laughs> so yes. uh, you'll be looking at him again another season. I was going to say we have a lot of, yeah, we have a lot of new faces kind of this year, but, um, you know, yeah, I, I like what we're building for the future for the next couple of years for sure. Coach, is it just me or does it seem like the NAI gets more competitive every year? Oh, absolutely. And, you know, I, I have a unique perspective because I've been in it for a long time. I coached in when it was Division One and Two. I've coached in Division Two, and I coached in Division One. I've got to see, you know, all these conferences play and everybody play. Um, I've got a good understanding of which regions play basketball, which way and all this stuff. But with, with the way the entire world is working and recruiting and transferring and all the things, I just feel like there's a lot of players that are being found and a lot of uh, good continuity being built in the NAI, maybe outside of some of the other ones that are, um, you know, shuffling rosters a little more than um, sometimes happens here. And so the teams just keep getting better and better. The talent keeps getting better and better. And I think you're seeing it even out across the board, which is why it's so hard to see separation you know back in the day you kind of have 30 teams or so you know you'd be like oh yeah those are just the ones and everybody else is down and then now I think it's kind of evening out and you're seeing a lot of um, good basketball and you know it's hard to always predict who's going to win what games and who's going to finish where but makes it for a good product for sure. I mean, I haven't counted them, but there's probably 50 teams that could make an argument to be in the top 25, maybe 60 or 70, uh, based on yeah, records absolutely. and who they beat. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, we played a, you know, we played we played a, a pretty tough schedule at this point, in playing a bunch of teams that are ranked or receiving votes and things like that already. And um, you know, we've seen a lot, and man, they're all good. So <laughs> I'll just tell you right now, everybody's everybody's very good, and there are a lot of teams, like you said, there's some teams that aren't even getting consideration right now that probably deserve to, but. It's the nature of having a lot of people, and that's why, you know, the poll kind of became a secondary criteria, and they started looking at other things because we didn't want it to get to that point where yeah, teams exactly. are getting lost in the shuffle. So let's take a look at your schedule. You're seven and three. Uh, you've had a couple of tough losses. The the loss at, at Langston that had to be tough. I mean, you're way better than a thirty point loss at Langston. We didn't we didn't play a good game that week that day. That is what we haven't really had a whole lot of like just pure duds this year. That one was a they they took it to us pretty good, and they're a very 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 good team and a very well coached team. And um, honestly, it was a Saturday afternoon game. We drove up there right after finals, and we weren't we weren't where we needed to be. So good learning experience for our guys, though. You know, a chance for us to, to get better against a great team and know what it takes. I, what I thought, Coach, was impressive is you turned around, uh, you had to go over to McPherson and play Central Christian, which if people don't know, that's a really good team this year, uh, and you yep. beat them up there. So that was I thought that was impressive that your guys could make that turnaround after that tough loss at Langston, and that was a big win for you. You needed that win. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, this is there's two times this season already, you know, we played Florida College in the Battle of the Beach um, earlier and we lost on. I'm sure you've seen it um, yeah. a little bit of a, a critical play at the end of the game. And then the next day we, you know, our guys showed some great resilience, bounced back and we beat Freed Hardman, who, you know, is one of the best teams we've played all year. They're phenomenal to me. So, you know, we turned around and won the game the next day. Um, and I was really proud of their resilience, and I felt like we showed a little bit of the same thing again here, despite the despite the poor performance. You know, finding a way to come back together, and you know, we actually, you know, they 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 did cut our lead um, down at the end of that game, but we did a pretty good job controlling that game, most of it on uh, Monday. And the you know crazy story, which is a great uh, 
great thing for you to hear here on this podcast is our hotel actually caught on fire oh, no. <laughs> Sunday night in, in, in Kansas. And we were standing outside in the middle of the night while our hotel is on fire and uh, had to change hotels at 3 a.m. and then still no. finding a way to come together and play a good game. I thought that was a cool moment for them. And I was telling them, hey, you know, these are the things that happen. And it's, it's cool to see them, um, you know, come together and play well. Yeah, I didn't know that story. That must have been a little scary experience, though. It was definitely, definitely different. He woke up, I thought somebody pulled the fire alarm, and I walk outside, and there's smoke everywhere. And I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> I was like, we might want to oh, yeah, get man. these guys up. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, Coach, when I when I look at your team, everybody knows I'm kind of a stats guy. I break your team down. You know, you're defending, you're defending well. You're shooting the ball really well. Uh, and you and I talked about it just before we started, but uh, you're having some trouble on the board. So talk about that and, you know, what you're – not to give away your secrets, but what are you guys trying to do to kind of turn that around? Because sure. big teams are giving you big trouble. Yeah, so we're um, we're in a little bit of a unique situation because our best player from last year, Cortland Blake, who has not played yet this year, he's going to be back here. Um, he hasn't played yet this year. Uh, he's a four man for us, and he's um, he's been out since like right the first week of school. Oh. So since he's out, you know, we kind of had to readjust what we were doing. So we are we are a little smaller. Um, we're playing kind of uh, more guards and wings. It's made us tough to cover. So, you know, obviously our offense has, has uh, benefited from it and some of the things people are having some hard times chasing us around. But we definitely, um, you know, need to be better on the glass. I think if you look at our game by game, we've had a couple real stinkers on the glass and then we've had a lot of games yes. where we've been pretty good. So it's not like it's it's not an everyday thing. It's kind of like a consistent thing. So when we have a we have some bad days and when we have bad days, it's not good. And, and to me, that. Um, you know, kind of attributes to intentionality and to our effort and, um, you know, things like that. I think whenever we're locked in and we're doing things right, we'll do better. And as he comes back, he'll, he's going to help us a lot with that. But, um, yeah, we got to get better. It's not a – I mean, you're not – championship teams, you know, rebound the ball well. And so, you know, I was – that's one thing. You know, J.J. Bowling had 18 rebounds against Central Christian on Monday. Um, that is, you know, that was a big key emphasis for us. And it was nice to see them after our, you know, we didn't, you know, we didn't do anything well on Saturday. So seeing them bounce back to that, we just have to get better at being consistent in those things and finishing possession. Well, the good news is you're seven and three and two and one in conference and and you still got time to kind of work on that and hone that, you know, I want to talk about the sooner conference just for a moment. I mean, we talked about, you went over to Langston, uh, Chris Wright does a great job over there, but I'm just looking through the, uh, the sooner you know, John Brown, they're better than people think. Science and arts, it looks like they've come back. Uh, Chris Francis done a good job over there. You guys are right behind them. And then Central Christian is tough. Wayland Baptist, I mean, just right. And then Mid-America Christian is playing good ball this year. And then Oklahoma Panhandle, uh, they almost took Wayland Baptist the other night. So just talk about the Sooner this season. Yeah, I think, you know, the biggest thing to me is the coaching is very, very good in our league. So I think you've got uh, – a lot of coaches that have had a lot of career success, um, people that just are great recruiters, um, know how to build uh, good teams, and are continually getting better. So when you look at it, yeah, you know, USAO is an extremely talented team. Um, if you see them play, they have so many guys that can score. And we did, you know, we, we beat them at their place. That was a crazy game. If you saw it was 97 to 90 mm-hmm. and could have gone either way down to the last two minutes. And um, they are going to be there till the end. They have a ton of guys that can score at Langston is an elite team. They're one of the best couples in the country. Um, Wayland's talent top to bottom. I don't think there's very many teams that have better individual talent than they do. Um, they're kind of, they had a lot of new pieces, so they're figuring it out. Um, you look at John Brown and the defensive, you know, they're just, they're big and they are um, disciplined and they force you to play good brand of basketball to beat them. And they're going to be in the game, you know, whenever you play them. And it's just, you got to, you know, it's hard to shut them out the end. If you saw they beat Waylon on a pretty tough buzzer beater, mm-hmm. it was a pretty, a pretty nice play from one of their kids. Um, yeah. OPSU, the co- you know, uh, coach belt has come in and, you know, given that program new life. Um, they're playing really well right now. I think, and I think beyond that too, you're talking Brendan Shingleton has two national championships. You know, you're looking at Texas Wesley and you're looking at Oklahoma city. Who's a, you know, they're, mm-hmm. they have a young team, but they're going to get better as the season goes. And I just Absolutely, think, yeah. you know, every, every game you play and Matt and then Gam, Josh Gamlin, he has a national championship as a coach and they're playing great team defense right now and with what they're doing. And, you know, it's a tough league and I, you know, it's definitely a challenge. Um, you know, I, I would say Josh Howard at UNT Dallas is also a very, very good coach that nobody really knows. Um, last year they had a really good year and had a, um, they had a, uh, 
uh, administrative issue and had to uh, drop some games last year, but they were actually a very good team last year and probably a borderline tournament team. Um, and he does a great job um, coaching his guys as well. So I just, you know, it, it's it's tough night in and night out, and it's a good challenge, but I think it, you know, definitely gets you prepared. And I think it's helped us in the past definitely be successful in the tournament just with what we see every single day. So, Coach, I'm going to ask you the same thing I've been asking everybody this time of year. You know, you got one more big test. You mentioned UNT Dallas. You got to go over there. Road games, I don't care who you're playing, are tough. Uh, What is it going to take for uh, Sagu to, uh, you know, get clean up some things and really compete for that Sooner title this season? Yeah, I think, I mean, our, our thing is just about being consistent with our details for us. So, um, you know, we can score the ball and we play pretty fast. And I think that we, you know, we obviously we're, we're one of the better assist teams in the uh, per game teams in the country. If you look at the way we play, um, I think we're, you know, I love our connectivity and all those things, but you know, the little things you're talking about, the rebounding, the being consistent defensively, which we've been pretty good, but um, you know, I, there's there's ways that I think we need to look better with our field goal percentage defense and some other things like that that we can improve on top of our pace of play and turning you over and things like that. Um, if we can put those things together and we can be a little bit more consistent, then, you know, I, I definitely think we're talented enough and I, and I think we have a lot of belief in our locker room. Um, you know, we finished, you know, I, this is my seventh year here. We've been um, you know, we've been pretty successful in the sooner either conference tournament championships or conference championships or things like that. Most of my years that I'm here. Um, and I think that our guys have a firm belief that we can find a way to do it, but man, this is a tall challenge this year. I really think that the league is, is, I think every game is a losable game, you know? <laughs> and, I feel like, and so I feel like, you know, I don't, you know, I don't want to get ahead of it. I think it's easy to say, Oh no, we're going to be here or there, but man, you know, any of us can lose two or three games in a row here. And then you, that's when you really start to see who separates themselves in your league is the ones who can handle that, stay together, um, you know, and then get better. You just have to continually get better and you can't be playing your best basketball. Now you just have to continually get better. And I, you know, hopefully adding, I think adding Cortland back will, will be a big boost for us, right. but you know, that's bring challenges in itself. Cause it's adding a new piece into the, into the mix. So, you know, a lot of things, but you know, I think we're right there and I think we have a chance. We just have, we just have to continue to, get better and and do things well you know coach deal i really agree with what you just said about the uh the ability to handle adversity i think is going to be the key now for now in the next few years because uh the the entire nai and all these conferences are so strong that everybody is going to face that it's how like you go over to langston right you 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 take a thump and you got to turn around you know, two nights later and you got to be ready to go. It's who can do that the best and who can make those slump periods as short as possible, right? Because everybody's going to, whether it's a game or two games or a half, who can who can handle that adversity the best? For sure. And I think that you'll see that across the board. And this isn't even just for conference championships. This is also, you know, get, keeping yourself in the mix to be there at the end and play in the tournament or, or keep yourself in the hunt, you know, do those things. I just, you know, basketball is a, is a game of success and failure. It's a, it's the highs and the lows happen quickly and managing the lows, you know, and getting to the point where you're like, you know, it's, we tell our guys, you know, art. So lately we've been, our, one of the big things we've been talking about is, you know, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So if you are, if you believe and you have faith of the, uh, in what's going on and hope and for your future, you're not really looking at the results only. And p- cause you can pay attention to that scoreboard and it can just drain you from who you are. And then all of a sudden now you're fighting yourself and you're fighting each other because of this result. But the reality is if you stay true to what you're doing and you believe in the processes of what you're doing, then, you know, you have to believe that the results will take care of the themselves at the end um, I think we've been pretty good about that over the years but you know every year is a new group and you know I don't know I mean that adversity can can you know we didn't handle it very well on Saturday I'll tell you that so you know if it, you know right. so when you when you have things like that but we did bounce back so you know it's just about growth process so if every day we're continually getting better staying true to what we're doing I believe we'll have a chance there at the end and that's really where we want to be is to be playing our best basketball come tournament time um, have a chance right there to, to you know see if we can't make a little noise again. Well, Coach Deal, I really appreciate you taking a few minutes and being on with us today. I uh, wish you luck, and uh, I want to wish you and then everybody, all the Sagu community, uh, a good Christmas and a good holiday. Yeah, thank you so much, man, for your coverage, and, and thanks for having me on and thinking about me. Um, you know, we listen to all your stuff and love what you do, and uh, we're really, pre- really appreciative, man. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. That's Delton Deal. He's the head men's basketball coach at Sagu. Thank you. Hey, thank you very much, Delton Deal. Uh, really enjoyed that conversation. 
Again, if you're a coach or if you're an SID trying to get your coach on, just send me a note on Twitter or send me an email at CascadeHoopsTalk at Gmail, CascadeHoopsTalk at Gmail.com. Well, we'll be back on Monday. I'm leaving in the morning. This weekend, I'm going to go watch basketball. That's what you need to do as well, and we'll be back first thing Monday morning. Thank you very much for supporting our podcast. Please like and subscribe. Get out to your local NAI school because NAI basketball is the best entertainment value in America.